our next speakers. Hello, Cyril. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. Thank you, Mehdi. Yeah. Everybody's Thanks. seeing me and hearing me well. Yeah, we can see you. Uh, you know, um, I, I asked Sanjit the, the, the question we, we from the discussion we had a few years ago about business model for opening and closing, about the Twitter ecosystem. So yeah, I think that was the best transition. And so yeah, you're here to talk to us about uh, yeah the new uh, reasonable, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, beyond the new normal, <laughs> right? As we call the exactly. company. Exactly. Uh, so should I get started? Yeah, yeah. You can share your screen. And we're uh, really glad to have you in your knowledge at the PIDs. Uh, yeah. Coming right up. Share. Perfect. We see your slide full screen. Great. Thank you. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, so for you, everyone hearing, and it's kind of uh, strange. Uh, I don't know many people are listening to that. Uh, and one year ago, exactly, almost, uh, I was uh, in a scene with people in chairs watching me. And today, one year after, well, one way to look at it is that, uh, you know, things happen uh, to stay polite. Uh, and what I wanted to address is that uh, we changed kind of our uh, stand uh, at Faber Novel uh, after this very, very uh, specific year. Uh, because something, as you might have all noticed, happened. Uh, and what happened, if I look at it from an almost design standpoint and try to uh, for no, uh, leave emotions out, is that almost one third of the global population was suddenly confined at home. For about from March to Aprilish or June, everybody was equal. Everybody was working in the same conditions, with the same constraints, with the same kind of, uh, you know, hovering fears or doubts. Uh, and everybody uh, in uh, most nations was once again uh, staying at home. And that was a big change. That was a huge change. And what I think this change apply, and that's what I want to address with you, is that we need to think a little bit more uh, about uh, maybe ethics, the ontology, and what we do with all the technology that we now uh, more and more uh, harness, master, standardize, are good at and able to produce almost anything. And I will do two things. I will try to make the first half really quickly around uh, you know, a little bit of uh, ethical strategy or a proposal about that. And secondly, uh, show you what I thought during that confinement were uh, extraordinary things done by uh, probably developers, APIs, and all ooh, whole ecosystem and whole culture of uh, you know uh, sharing things and uh, like you were saying, linking them horizontally as fast as possible to succeed. So once again, huge event for the first time in uh, probably centuries. Everybody uh, was roughly in the same situation almost everywhere, and what that created uh, first could be said as kind of positive, although it's not really every time, is that we had what I call the compression of adoption. You know, it takes time and we're already crossing the chasm and we all are thinking about when are people going to adopt my application, my new tools, my new idea. And suddenly, stuff that were kind of uh, in the process of adoption became mainstream in basically a few weeks. Uh, just to name a few, because uh, you know we've all been there, we're all watching Netflix uh, and Disney and probably some other stuff. Uh, my wife, <coughs> as we speak, is actually in my living room doing some uh, uh, Pilates, uh, looking at a Zoom video rather than just uh, being in a room. Uh, and we all went crazy over probably PS4 and No5. Uh, so everything that's from media and entertainment kind of exploded and specifically remote usages. Of course, everything around e-commerce became uh, mainstream and suddenly become not only a commodity, but uh, a must have. Uh, and I'll go back to that, but you know, uh, where you can start to think a little bit about what's reasonable or not. Uh, if I want uh, to uh, see what uh, drove my reflection is that I live in a small town around Paris. Uh, we were confined. Most of the business, non-essential ones we say in France, were closed. Uh, and suddenly, there were two categories of retailers, those who had some idea on how to use their smartphone and those who didn't. The first one managed to save a little bit of business, some of them even to uh, become good at click and collect or delivery. Unfortunately, some others had to close. And that kind of created that uh, first sense of, you know, uh, 
was it that reasonable to uh, not educate all these small businesses around digital? Uh, should they be isolated from performance? Well, I don't know. The reality is that no e-commerce is something that everybody needs to uh, use and be able to process as a retailer, whether you are a very small shop or a huge uh, company. Of course, and uh, this uh, specific API, the API is uh, a demonstration. We all started working remotely. Uh, like I like to say, I started uh, spending my days talking to my laptop by myself in my room, not knowing if anybody was listening, which is kind of a weird sensation that I have now. Uh, and, you know, telework, uh, remote working, remote solution finding, remote white papers and the dashboards became uh, mundane. And we all are starting to use them and we have to adapt. And once again, uh, reasonability, what is it? I discovered, for instance, that uh, when I was confined for the first time, if I wasn't controlling anything, I could end up working 12 to 13 hours a day without even noticing and wondering why I was tired and uh, kind of lacking exercise. That's what's happening. And, you know, uh, we had to redefine what's a work day. And of course, uh, in general, uh, it became evident that uh, you now have to uh, have a smartphone to function in a confinement, or at least it helps a lot. And of course, thanks to internet, APIs, all the infrastructure we've put in place in the 20 past years, and the know-how of developers, internet traffic was there. And I don't think we can say that it would have been the same experience without internet. It probably would have been, uh, you know, unsufferable without internet, whereas it became uh, really annoying thanks to uh, our smartphones and interactions. Which gives us uh, one question after that crisis. Now we have kind of the end of the tunnel. You know, the first person was uh, vaccinated uh, in UK uh, last week, or actually, I think Monday, uh, which means that we see the end, but we have the what we call the innovator's dilemma, now that is almost at uh, our civilization scale. Or maybe because we are at API days, maybe as a collective, as a group, uh, our culture needs to think a little bit more about, you know, do we want to go back to business as usual? And business as usual is exactly the same thing as before, but we know where it goes. We know what can happen and we probably don't want that to happen any anymore. Or do we try to use what we do to build a more reasonable future? And if I don't say, uh, you know, a new future or a revolutionary future, it's like I like to say, you know, it's uh, I like utopias. They are really, really cool to listen to, but I have a hard time believing them. We need to build a more uh, sane, more um, efficient world that respects probably more the planet, that is more equitable economically and uh, ecologically, uh, that takes care of ourselves and our close ones uh, a little bit more. Uh, and to rebuild an economy without stopping the same one. You know, it's the old uh, innovator's dilemma. Uh, you have basically to change the engines of the plane while, it, while it's flying, and that's always difficult. And to do that, we said, okay, and that's the first proposal I'll make to you. I have some ideas and guidelines, and all I'm asking to all the people that are at Faber Noble and trying to uh, know if we must accept or refuse a project, if we must do this or do not, not do it, how we can behave, what we should do, because as a collective, as API builders, we also have the responsibility of uh, ensuring the interconnection of our civilization. I know it seems a little bit uh, hyper strategic, if not ideologistical, but that's the reality. We build new stuff that people use. And as that, even if we are developers, even if we are in for profit and to make money as a service, we need, I think, collectively to start asking those questions. The first one is, do we have all the facts and data to decide? Because once again, if there's one thing I personally retain from that crisis, is that it was, first of all, last December, a fact and data crisis. No one was, I'd say, convincing enough with enough data or represented well enough to convince government of exactly what they should do. Thus, we had that kind of weird period where some government can find, some others say, no, it's nothing. I think it was a collective failure of presenting correctly the right data. One thing that API do very well. The second thing we need to think of when we enter a project is economic equity or economic soundness. Ju the just for profit or the full profit model doesn't cut it anymore and we see where it goes. And I think it's all our responsibilities to think, you know, is the economics of my project sound? Am I, uh, you know, making money while uh, making someone suffer somewhere? 
while not really taking care about where the energy comes from, by not really thinking about who can buy it and who cannot, etc. Right now, we have to make sure that everything we do is economically sound. That doesn't mean not for profit. It just means that, you know, it cannot be only for profit. And we're all able to do that. Of course, and I think that's the main thing that I discovered during this crisis, everything we do needs to be cultural, culturally acceptable. Uh, we tend to be tech guys, you know, and tech guys uh, sometimes are uh, more akin to Star Trek, I am, uh, than to general culture and uh, looking at what people do and don't. The reality is that we had some failures because we didn't think about cultural acceptability. In France, I think we had one, which was our anti-COVID app, which was probably technically sound and interesting. The problem is that wherever I looked at it, culturally in France, it was hard to accept to have an app that tracks you. And just that means that in every project, whether you do it for the inside, the outside, or I hope all our civilization, we must think about cultural acceptability of what we do. Otherwise, people just won't do it or won't use it. And that's, to me, an essential component. And of course, but this one is uh, ours and only ours. We all have personal values. They must be respected. And we at least need to have the right to say, OK, uh, that's probably a good project. But for that and that reason, I won't participate. And all I'm asking our collective, or culture, at Fabo Novel, and I'm proposing it to you, of course, is to just ask yourself those four questions before doing something. And if you feel it awkward, then think again, and maybe you find a solution, because there are very, very cool solutions. Even if the impact seems sometimes kind of irrational, frightening, you know, uh, if we stop doing some stuff, what about low-cost travel? Personally, I think low-cost travel is challenging because you know it's about putting as many people as possible as fast as possible in the same room for a long time to go elsewhere complicated thing like you know the olympics to me is a complicated topic some good stuff you know i everybody really discovered cooking at home and in france at least the cooking at home market is buoyant and uh, we have new proposal so you know food supply financing everything needs to be a little bit rethought and when rethought Probably it will need to be redone. And when redone, you will be asked to do it because we are the guys that know what APIs are and we are devs. But when that happens, you know, we need to ask ourselves, is what we are producing reasonable? And it can be. Because in the end, our goal and the goal of API, if I take a very high level, is it can help companies, industries become anti-fragile and adaptable. Why? This is the way we manage any company, or I did actually, uh, when I was in corporations or even small corporations, you know, we create silos. Uh, and then every year we try to grow those silos because we need to make more revenue. So in an ideal world, uh, well, you know, it works like that or it should work like that. The reality is that now we're in a world where that can happen. And, you know, I always take the same example. At one point in France, some uh, automotive constructors at a revenue of zero. In theory, that cannot happen. In theory, no business can go down to zero in two weeks. We know now that, unfortunately, can happen. So the challenge, I think, that we also need to help address those companies is to become anti-fragile. And APIs just do that. You know, you cut everything in small services. You put small teams around there. And suddenly, everything is agile and can be commissioned or decommissioned, be turned on and off. Uh, you can go from retail to e-commerce to retail in basically a matter of weeks. And I think that's the target, and we can produce it. And we can produce it at all scale. And the good news is that, you know, uh, everybody now can do it because all our customers, all our employees, all the people who are working, all the talents, all our suppliers have that in their pocket. And once again, I'm a fan of smartphones because, you know, I, uh, I come from a time where uh, my first PC was 2 mega of RAM and wasn't fitting uh, in my room. Well, today we have a supercomputer in our pockets and we can use it. And when we do it, spectacular. Uh, because not only do we have those devices, but they have incredible uh, infrastructure. And I think uh, that reflects to the previous keynotes. There's everything on the market. Uh, and just look at the names that you all know there to do almost anything. So if you're a corporation, you need control. You probably want to be the business around it. You want your control points. You want to do some stuff. But if you're a small shop, if you're a moms and pops shop, and uh, you know they are the ones that were the closest and the most useful during confinement, you have everything in that kind of uh, smartphone box to do whatever you want. You can diversify your channel, start your activity, animate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
And just as a reminder, there's over 250,000 business apps in the app stores. So of course, they are not your apps, they are not branded, uh, they are not necessarily exactly the one you needed, but they are there. And if you learn how to use them, you can do magic. And I'll finish with some you know, API magic because that's what we're here for too. So in a new reasonable world, you can do stuff that are incredible if you stop thinking about some things. And I'll take a few examples that I noticed in France, of course, and a bit in the US that I like. For instance, Blablacar, which is uh, another Uber or ride-sharing company, managed, and I don't know how, but probably APIs because I know they're full API, uh, to launch a new service just to say, you know, uh, if you are doing a run and don't want to a transportation, but somebody to carry uh, your basket, then you can ask Blablacar. And they issued in a matter of days new services. And this one, for instance, which is just for mutual help between neighbors, as you can see, it's, of course, uh, a map with interaction, etc. They use the APIs, and in roughly days, they were able to produce a new feature that helped a lot of people. And I think that's the spirit we must have when we are reasonable. That was a very reasonable thing to do, although this was between brackets for free. It was the same price, and, you know, uh, people could arrange it between themselves. It didn't matter. We just wanted to help each other. More mercantile, and, you know, uh, but that's life. Uh, suddenly, some companies, or not necessarily retail companies, that were hesitating since a long time about e-commerce, you know, yeah, but uh, if people can take appointments in the store, what does it mean for my employees, etc., etc., suddenly they did it. And suddenly you saw things that I think are very, very cool, which is companies working together really fast without making it a project without making it, you know, a strategy, but just doing it really fast. And because of APIs, they could do it. And that's, to me, the most interesting experience, because that means that when we want to do it, and I'll leave you because I think I only have one minute left uh, on that one, but there's other exact. This one is my favorite example, because that's a good inspiration for what's coming next and what is being reasonable. We had two things in Paris. We had millions of Parisians that needed to do, you know, uh, home delivery of food. Very little uh, retail shop that stayed open in Paris for the reason you can imagine. And roughly uh, 30 kilometers from Paris, we have Rangis, the first marketplace for professionals of food in France, that basically was watching uh, its stock uh, slowly perishing. What they did, they called uh, Califray, which is basically a small delivery shop. They worked together, and in a matter of one week, they launched Rangis Livre Chez Vous, Rangis Delivers Home, uh, .fr. And what was interesting, you know, there were no discussions about who controls what, whose customers are whom, what is the brand, am I doing a white label product for Rangis or is Rangis using my, nothing like that. There was an emergency, there was a need. They did it together, and that was one of the most successful uh, on, uh, home delivery uh, food systems in Paris. And thanks to that, a lot of Parisians were able to receive French vegetables and to receive fresh food and good food from Rangis. And that little example, you know, I think before the confinement, before unfortunately COVID, that would have become a corporate project of people discussing about how do we tackle this. What happened is that, as we like to do, you know, uh, there were APIs, there were people wanting and feeling they needed to do it in a room. They didn't overthink it, they didn't overplan it, and they just did it. And we have plenty of little usage like that, of small examples like Starling Blank that suddenly launched a product to help people that were isolated, give some money to someone so he could do my shopping. All those little innovations, whether in fintech, whether in food, whether uh, in distribution, you know, Decathlon, which own stores, suddenly decided to open Decathlon uh, corners in great distribution to make sure that anybody at home could buy a yoga, a yoga mat. Same, simple, but, you know, they made decisions in minutes that probably wouldn't have been done in years before. They changed their way of thinking about strategy and became anti-fragile, saying, you know, if we want to continue, we need to do that. And once again, although it came from a crisis, but, you know, I like this sentence from, uh, I guess, uh, as usual, Napoleon or Franklin Roosevelt, that said, never waste a good crisis. And I think if there's something I must retain from the start, if we think about being reasonable, if we think about using API as a way of gaining velocity and putting things faster in the market, 
then I think we can really build fantastic things really fast together, merging services and embedding each other, like you were saying, to provide fantastic stuff that really helps people. And that's what I think we should retain and do after this crisis, specifically when, as we are, we are professionals working with APIs, thus we are able to do it. We have the methods and we have the technologies. And I finish with that one. What I kind of change in my mindset is that it's very simple. I think the world now and what we produce and what we build, we were talking about simplicity, what customers want in coherence. You know, uh, I know you are the Catlan. I know it's simple to go to a store. I cannot go no now. Please just be coherent and continue, continue caring for me. And coherence is just tuning, building an experience that is the same everywhere and that works with the current context. We want transparency, and now we also want honesty. You know, if you can do it, please tell me. If you can do it, please tell me. If you don't want to do it, please tell me. And please tell it to me with a human. So I think what we're going to see is more and more, you know, uh, sorting what robots can do and what humans can do, making sure humans do the best, best thing they can do. And I really, really think that's very important because, you know, uh, I don't know if machines can uh, be reasonable, but I think humans can surely do. We are all humans, and my message is, you know, let's try together, and I let you, with everyone in the conference, build a more reasonable world, because, unfortunately, the confinement proved we can. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Cyril. Uh, what an inspiring talk uh, about, yeah, when we decided to call API Days responding to the new normal, and when you uh, we reach you and you say, no, new normal is we have a unique opportunity to make a new reasonable yeah it definitely uh, uh, uh resonates in our mind so i have a I have a quick question um is it you know a lot of people are were trying to push different shift from companies right even just digital transformation has been really really hard to push in the mindset of executives right now it's even beyond just a potential business opportunity it's a societal responsibility, do you think, and, and who better than you and Fabernaval knows about uh, educating executives, right, about, about what's happening in, in, in prepare to the future, what do we need to do to convince them that, uh, yeah, this is what they need to do now? Uh, it's a very good question. Um, I think, uh, to be honest, we don't need to do much more. Uh, <clears throat> you know, it's, it seems, uh, I don't know if it's uh, it resonated worldwide, but uh, Danone, uh, major food processing company uh, that were not for customers uh, decided to become a B Corp or a, not a, a purpose company, decided that they couldn't be all for profit, uh, realized, like uh, it's, for, it's a CEO said, you know, that no people are reading the small lines in the back of the packaging and we cannot ignore it anymore. I think the real question, and that's why I'm saying uh, we, we collectively have a good responsibility, is they have a hard time understanding how. Because once again, uh, we've been spending years putting uh, businesses and markets and products in silos. We've been over-optimizing them a lot. Uh, and that was probably a good way of creating growth and creating value, you know, optimizing your product, uh, compacting it. And now we need to integrate, to integrate everything horizontally and vertically. So there's one technical question, but once again, we have all the solutions and the, the, the previous keynotes was very interesting. Yes, anybody can integrate horizontally or vertically with software and it's the right thing to do. But once you start doing that, you go into very, very big problem that ends into the organization of the company. The reality is that there are two big impacts that are seldom within the computing or application or new experience project, which is first one finance, who's going to pay for the transformation? Am I going to finance, you know, uh, changing my organization, my tech, my customer relationship, the way people work together while maintaining the business? Because of course, while I'm doing that, I need to continue to, to uh, you know, run my payroll, <laughs> uh, satisfy my customers. And once again, it's the dilemma now of uh, changing the engine of the plane while flying. So I think we did probably, even as tech companies, even if you're mostly 90% people building stuff with APIs, you need to take into account more and more uh, the how to do it and the more kind of strategic stance. So I think everybody, we need to do a little bit of strategic consulting. Think about things we didn't need to think about, organization, who does what, 
uh, how do I continue business continuity a little bit more and propose more global solutions uh, to corporations because as far as identifying the need, I think they're all there actually. I don't I, I haven't heard one CEO saying uh, no no this is this is nothing this won't it won't happen again. So so we have a question uh, uh, from John. Do do we also need reasonable benefit uh, profits? <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, you know, uh, like uh, I, I'm uh, ethics is not about you know uh, utopias where everybody's happy and sharing and there's no more money, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm not saying I would disagree with that. I'm just saying let's be realistic. There's a path to go there. Even if we wanted to go there, there's a transformation to do. Transformation means that people will need to change jobs, learn new skills, uh, learn new technologies, learn new behaviors that takes time because globally that's a change of culture, I think. And within that, once again, we still haven't found a better way to share resources and to split resources and to make sure everybody uh, fills up his uh, bottom of the master pyramid than exchanging transactions and money. So yes, of course, it needs to be for profit. The real question is, uh, you know, how much profit is enough? How much should I give back to uh, the little footprints I probably left and uh, didn't really take care of before? How do I make sure that while this is happening, everyone, my suppliers, my talents, my customers, stay happy and uh, really happy? That costs, and once again, it's more of a stance of uh, not all for profit, not no profit, because you know you we still need things at scale. We still need people to have the means to invent new stuff and innovate. And that costs. So that has to be financed. Uh, so yes, I think it's more a question of uh, equity in profits and not necessarily sharing them where we were sharing them rather than not making profits. Of course, we need to continue. Yeah, so we have a Christian who is disappointed about Rangis because he said uh, he was not aware about, about the initiative. But uh, it reminds me, you know, the book from Pablo Servigny, uh, if I translate in English, it's Mutual Aid, The Other Law of the Jungle, right? It's, you know, when, when necessity arrives, when necessity comes, like it seems people are able to make connections that they were, they were not making uh, before, right? And, and APIs can help at least their IT system to be connected. But yeah, but how, how this company should, 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 should behave? Do they need to fear or do they need to embrace you know, the, 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 the reasonable you talk about? Uh, well, the, this is not really a question. So, yeah, of course, they, they need, the, once again, they need to embrace. And I think at uh, COMEX levels with all our customers, uh, they are embracing it and they understood it. So, uh, once again, the, the ideology is there. Uh, the, the direction is there. But once again, and I think I, uh, I formulated that way, it's really the innovator's dilemma. You know, uh, there's an old world where I've, I'm comfortable, I built myself for it, I'm efficient in it, I was efficient in it, and suddenly things happen. Uh, and uh, this past is not adapted anymore, I know it, but how do I go to the next stage? And I think that's really when we need to help them. Something sometimes that can seem strange, but uh, it could be an inspiration for them, it's to go even more local. Uh, because what really happened, for instance, where I live, uh, for full disclosure, I, I live in Versailles, uh, is that uh, between customers, retail outlets, and a little bit uh, of uh, the Mary, so uh, I'd say the, um, uh, the state, uh, we built a temporary co-economy. Uh, the, the, the city of Versailles created a Facebook, a Facebook page so that every retailer that was open could go there and then informed all these uh, citizens that they could go there to know which, which store was open when. Uh, every store that could uh, started using SMS and uh, discussing with the uh, people in the buildings to know who could put in the flyers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And if I take a step back, we built a co-economy for uh, two months. And the co-economy needs everybody did its part. Everybody <coughs> asked everybody else uh, what we should do and how do we do it and do you know how to do it? And that kind of uh, you know uh, at the same time stress and compression made that it work. So I think even if you are a corporation. Maybe a solution is to go more local, including in your organization, to listen to what's happening really at uh, retail level and interaction with customer level, uh, and listen to them and implement it. Basically, that's design thinking. Yeah, maybe from competition to sometimes cooperation, like cooperation and competition. Yeah. Thank you, Cyril. Thank you so much for. Thank you very much for receiving me. Maybe. Right. Uh, to know more about what you do and, and uh, with Fabernaval, they can go on. Everybody can go on fabernaval.com. Yes. 
Uh, and Fabrano Valone, or you type Gaphanomics in any good uh, bookstore search engine, and you'll have our first two books appearing. Uh, and read them. There's a good chunk of our philosophy in that. So either fabernovel.com or the books. Thank you very much. I have my copy of the two books in the shelves. I will show them uh, later. Thank you, Cyril. Thank you very much.